We're back with the bigger picture. Robot Army in three, two. We've all seen the movies Terminator and RoboCop, Hollywood's sci-fi fascination with killer robots. But it may become a reality sooner than we think. There is a revolution underway right now in military technology. Our Paul Johnson tonight with the prototype for a robot army. If you ask a guy like Jerry Baber, he'll tell you that in the future, this is the kind of place where soldiers are going to be born. This is what they'll look and sound like, and this is what they'll be like in combat. I don't think that an enemy can face one of these things and survive. Baber is one of the first inventors to come up with a working prototype of a heavily armed, remote-controlled ground robot based around the world's only fully automatic shotgun, something Baber developed himself. It's not the kind of thing you'd want to run into in an alley in Afghanistan. So the, the rate of fire is so great and the destructive capability downrange is so great that you just can't fight against it. You just better not try because it's going to take you apart. As much as Baber's robots seem like the stuff of an eccentric inventor in Tennessee, recent history shows he may actually be on the cutting edge of a military robotics revolution that is literally bringing science fiction to the world's battlefields. Just a few years ago, the U.S. military had only a small handful of working robots in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, they number in the thousands, attacking enemies from the air and dismantling bombs on the ground, taking risks that their human counterparts no longer have to take, and hunting targets with the precision of microprocessors and unblinking infrared eyes. Humankind has had a 5,000-year-old monopoly on fighting wars. That monopoly is being broken in our lifetime. Take, for example, the PackBot, made by the same company that makes the Roomba robotic vacuum cleaner. It's been so successful at finding and dismantling bombs and IEDs in Iraq that the U.S. military has bought more than 12,000 ground robots like it, a literal army unto itself. Author Peter Singer's best-selling book, Wired for War, explores this revolution and the disappearing barrier between humans and robot soldiers. Well, what's fascinating is some of the soldiers have been giving them medals. Um, giving them military funerals when they get blown up. Picture any dangerous task that would take place in a conflict zone, and the chances are there is a robotic system for that job that's already been built or is on the drawing board. Not sure if your enemy is hiding in a neighborhood or not? Well, send up a Predator drone that can loiter for hours and then attack it with missiles if they ever surface. Predators, in fact, have become so useful in Iraq and Afghanistan that they can't be built fast enough. If it sees footprints in a field, it's smart enough to backtrack them to where they came from. In Afghanistan, where most Canadian casualties have come from roadside bombs, a partial solution may eventually come in the form of something like this. Unmanned armored supply trucks that use GPS to navigate their way over dangerous roads and may reduce the risk human drivers have to take to deliver some supplies. Canada is already using sophisticated unmanned aircraft like this Heron for surveillance operations. And where there isn't an existing system that soldiers want, they're improvising with what they have. Meet Prairie Dog, currently on active duty with Canada's troops in Afghanistan. But Prairie Dog isn't yet standard issue in the Canadian Army. So when combat engineer Simon Engler of Calgary wanted something to help assess dangerous objects, he bought parts from hobby shops, spent a few months of his own time in elbow grease, and built his own robot soldier. A great little tool to roll up and, and look and see, is it, is it safe for me to go up? Uh, I can go up to an object and identify it, and then I can know know what tools I have to bring to deal with it or, or whether or not I should approach it at all. Now consider this. Everything that you've seen so far is existing technology. But the law that we've observed since the invention of computers is that processing power doubles every two years. So what does that mean for the future of war? I thought Bill Gates put it really well. He said, robots are where 
computers were around 1980. While budgets are being cut for things like manned fighter planes, DARPA, the Pentagon's super secret science agency that invented the internet, is pouring more and more money into robots. So take the killer robots that someone like Jerry Baber is building, add a few more years of development, and you get a sense of what could be on the horizon. While future robot soldiers probably won't look like the governor of California, with the advanced computer brains and capabilities they'll have, it's likely they will have a human-like autonomy on the battlefield raising the central ethical question about robot soldiers. Who will make the decision to pull a trigger, man or machine? In policy circles, we don't want to talk about it, even though the interesting thing is it's trending that way. And experts say that just because countries like the US currently have the lead in robotics doesn't mean they always will. With much of the robotics revolution driven by open source and off-the-shelf technology, other countries can quickly and cheaply get into the game. Recently, a Manitoba company that makes computer brains for remote-controlled airplanes saw some of its products illegally smuggled into China. U.S. investigators say the people who did it had ties to Chinese military intelligence. And it's not just foreign countries getting in on the game, but possibly terrorist groups as well. In 2006, Hezbollah used at least four unmanned drones in its war with Israel. One of the people I met with for the book, senior scientist for the Pentagon, and he said, look, if you gave me $50,000 and I wanted to, I could shut down Manhattan right now. That's a scary prospect. But back in Tennessee, inventors like Jerry Baber will tell you, yes, all of those possibilities are real. But history shows there's no stopping the march of technology especially when it comes to war. They do so many things uh, that they get the soldier out of harm's way where he just doesn't have to do it. They take the incoming fire that run the soldier. Next on 16 by 9. When you're driving three to four hours each way to play a game of hockey, you got to be seriously committed and a little nuts. I love the sport, and if it's the only way I can do it, so be it. Did you miss something? Watch our show 16 by 9 online at global16by9.com.